Well, good morning. <clears throat> it, uh, wow, you know, it kind of feels like I have Dan Pal Pan 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 Keldy here. Dan Pan Keldy here. Look at that action. It's kind of early this morning. And, uh, you know, I thought it's New Year's Eve. Got all the shelves open behind me. Been rearranging some things and goofing around. And I thought, I I'm going to do something different for uh, my, you know, annual recap of what I loved and what I didn't love and the top 10 and all that nonsense. You know, I'm, there's already like 40 videos out of all that, so you can go watch other people's things. I'm just gonna talk about categories that I liked this year, things, some of the things I didn't like, <clears throat> and I try and put that in the context uh, of the year and of um, my progression as a war gamer, sort of going through the, the, the motions and the exercises of, of uh, getting caught up on the hobby. I've been back at this now for 10 years. And, you know, my first couple of years back uh, from a 20 plus year hiatus, I had a, a really urgent need to see what I'd missed, right? Well, what, what had happened since, what must it have been? I guess I stopped playing about 87, maybe at the end of college, probably something like that. Uh, and didn't get reconnected until, you know, uh, 2010. So that's a long time. How many years that is, that's a while. What had happened in the, in the meantime between all, uh, all the, you know, different game companies and companies going broke and you know, I didn't even know that SBI went out of business, right? That's, that's how out of the hobby I was, 100% out of the hobby. Um, look, I have a freaking mask in my pocket. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, I want to see what what had gone on uh, over that uh, that you know multi-decade era. That's why I dug in and I bought a bunch of games and but and had you know a bunch of ideas and thoughts and you know, I, that's when I and I started blogging roughly at the same time, uh, just because I got so excited about what I saw on BGG uh, with folks writing about ancient history and uh, the uh, uh, you know the AARs, the after-action reports and stuff like that. So I got all excited about all that. And uh, <clears throat> after about, I don't know, maybe three or four years, I, I think other than some of the Victory Games titles, I was, I was incredibly underwhelmed with sort of what had happened. And I, was, I started comparing, so what had happened in that, that absence, um, uh, that period where I wasn't around. And then uh, during that time, I started playing over the last 10 years, games that were more recently produced in the last 15 years, which, you know, it's all kind of weird now when you look at 1987, I feel like it was yesterday. And actual fact, it's a long ass time ago. But in the last decade, I think gaming has changed a lot and I'm not gonna get into the golden age and all that sort of business. But I will say that I think there've been some significant improvements in the production values and uh, the, while, Games are potentially coming out at a faster pace in some ways, but slower in others uh, because of the P500 systems. <clears throat> uh, I feel like we're, we're getting better value for money today than we were a while back. But I've got something stuck in my eye. Like it's really, I should have just got up half an hour ago. So second cup of coffee, we'll get there. So uh, anyway, my point was I've, I realized see, it, it, the, the realization occurred to me that there are a lot of new systems and new games and new designs and new developers and new designers that are bringing uh, innovation and excitement to the hobby that we, you know, that just blows away all, you know, the the a magazine, a magazine game a month SBI stuff or the, the trite, uh, 1d6 table with you know th one to three three to one and all this sort of stuff right it could because that was good for its time and it's not to dismiss it but when i go back to it and try and look at it like decision of casserine i go to look at that game and go play it and, and you could tell that someone whoever tested that game and i apologize if you're still alive um you tested it with the history in mind and you played as both as both sides would have done historically versus playing to test the game's boundaries and what would break the game and all the rest of it because it's a completely shit game and uh it was one of the worst games i played this year 
interesting topic, interesting approach for the period, but really not a not a good game. And I played that opposed as well. So it's not, and it wasn't just my opinion of that. We both looked at it and went, "What the hell?" All right. So, uh, so I want to. So with that context in mind, we get to 2020. And I've got a lot of new games on my list that I, I love this year. I've got a lot of uh, new games that I'm not impressed with this year. Uh, and I don't want to dwell on all the negative stuff because we've had a rough year this year. Uh, all of you have had a rough year or many of you have had a rough year. I've had an incredibly difficult year this year. It's been... Um, from a family perspective, a fiscal perspective, and an emotional perspective, it's been an incredibly challenging uh, year for me. So it's been a growth year for Kev. Uh, if I, and not so much for the big boy, but just for me personally. All right, so let's get all the let's get all the crap out of the way, and let's talk about the good stuff, and then we'll we'll get on with it. All right. And so I'm going to kind of do this. Uh, I've got I've got some notes, but you know they're Kev notes. So one of the first games that I, I was super excited about that I thought was going to be amazing and I should have known better, Decision Games, Desert Fox Deluxe, the, you know, it was, it was uh, obviously a, a you know, SBI Magazine classic for whatever that means. I've played that game a couple of times as it, or as it stood, still a good game, yeah, interesting and innovative in, its, in, in of itself and for its time. Uh, Desert Fox Deluxe came out as a magazine game and then they boxed the sucker up and, you know, fixed some things and made it better. Well, uh, and, and you know, if you follow my channel at all, you know that I went on about for 25 minutes after I'd set the maps up and started looking at the counters and the charts and I walked you all through all that about how excited I was going to, I was about this. Like, I can't wait to play. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Crash. Like, uh. Sound effects central for how completely disappointing this game was. If you want to know why, go look at the videos. I'm not going to. I'm not going to dwell on on the absolute disappointment this was to me. I um, lots and lots of potential here that just was not realized. Lazy, lazy development effort. Lazy uh, proof testing, um, <clears throat> proofreading. Uh, lazy playtesting, inconsiderate, rude uh, developer, inconsiderate, ignorant uh, uh, publisher. That said, I'm going to come back to this son of a bitch and I'm going to work it out and we're going to see if there is actually a decent game in there because I believe there is. It's just not well done. So, adios, mofo. Second one that I was not impressed with this year, Death Ride Salerno. Look, this guy has got some great ideas in this box. This was given to me as a gift. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say as a gift. As a loner uh, to play and then to send back. And I'm still holding on to it because I'm going to give it another go. Setup instructions on this in this game, uh, just by itself, were beyond my capability to... Uh, accurately assess uh there, there was inconsistencies in the way things are uh, represented to you and if you, there's there's no clear indication kind of kind of like the the tsww system this these guys All right you know uh <clears throat> we'll get to these guys in a second they're next uh i i made some huge mistakes because there was a headquarter unit uh, on the the setup diagram, it's a picture, it's a pictorial pictograph. Uh, you you it's at HQ, so I put the HQ there. Well, that actually meant that the whole battalion goes there. Like, couldn't you just say that somewhere in the setup rules or something? So that ruined that for gameplay. I wasted I wasted twenty hours on this friggin' thing. The rules are not being really being updated for this. You, you got to go get the Kursk rules and then work out what belongs in this versus the others. And there's some really cool, innovative uh, add-ons that add some some detail to the game. You got to go buy all that stuff. I, I just it's kind of like it's it's a milk and the cow thing for a very 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 ordinary uh, production quality for a print print. It's almost a print and play except that someone's printing it for you and you're being charged a significant amount of money. 
And I respect the fact that it's that Chris is a standalone publisher and doing his own thing and making these one copy at a time. I got it. But it's still way, way too expensive for, for my budget anyway. So, soup, soup, I, and once again, I'm gonna come back to this this year as well. So it's not to say that you shouldn't try these games. It's just that they, they there's things lacking here that, that stop it from being awesome right out of the gate. And the, you know, Chris even sent me an email and said, hey, look, I revised the setup instructions and what, what do you think if we did this thing? And it was, you know, six pages of notes and this, that, and the other. I was like, dude, I just wanna know if you put a hex, if you put a unit in a hex, is it a unit or multiple units? And if it's multiple units, just write the list down or say the entire battalion. That's all I needed. I didn't need all this other stuff that he wrote, which was really like super military jargon shit. And it's like, I'm not a military guy. I, I play one on TV. That's a joke. Um, these guys. So I've gone through the rules twice with this and I'm good to go. I'm ready to play this. It's, it, I, 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 I have my opinions on how it's gonna play out. We'll see. My biggest issue with this game is setup instructions. There are two different ways to play this game. One, it's a, like a five day turn thing. And then I forget what's it say here. Uh, I'm just trying to see what the, uh, this, this two half month variant, All right? So it's a two week and then a five day or a month. I, I don't know, whatever it is. Okay. Well, there are different units that you use for each, each setup, each, each variation. I, um, now, it's stated in the setup instructions, the specific units. But you're left over with all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, is that a roll-up? Do I, can I combine these guys and put them together? It, nowhere in here that I could see in the setup instructions, which is by country. So that means you've got to go back over the map multiple times. So you, you, you do the Germans, you do, and then you do the Italians, and then you do the British, and then, you know, if there's multiple factions, you're doing it for each one. I, I was trying to do this for Maria McCurr, and it's a pain in the ass. Um, nothing in there that explains all that. Now, I think this game is trying to be, like, grand tactical at the operational scale. So I'm, 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 that's my suspicion. We'll see once I actually get it set up and play it it's one of the first things if i can suck it up and be a big boy and play it i'm gonna do it all right we're 12 minutes in that's all i got to say about uh what one, one more thing I, i'm just it's a side note here and I'm, I'm sure i'm gonna tick off the guys from lock and load but what one of my disappointments this year with lock and load was the constant revision uh of uh the lock and load tactical rules and now the the, the two new uh honchos having to leave their imprateur or their footprint uh, uh, on the game by adding rules and, change, and changing the game. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I wasn't impressed. It should have all been made optional rules and then let us make a choice for those that have played the game for a long time, whether or not we wanna use them, these optional rules, which I believe, despite what everyone says, change the game significantly. Enough said on that. Now. Favorite games for the year. So my favorite, favorite uh, Ancients slash Solitaire game for the year, Marcus Aurelius, and this is probably all going to be back in front for you guys. <clears throat> uh, Marcus Aurelius from uh, Robert Delasecchi. Delasecchi, did I say that right? I've played this three or four times now. It is uh, a choice-rich, tense just hard choices to be made the entire time an entire time if you're going to buy a solitaire game <clears throat> on the ancients world uh th this is your game now he's done some more titles uh as well you can go look at those i haven't played them can't talk to whether or not they're as good uh this was great fantastic artwork on the map it, it, it's highly thematic lots of narrative i wrote a four or five part uh narrative on the gameplay for this Really, the gameplay broke out the history for me, had me pulling out books and magazine articles about Aurelius. Uh, you know, we all know about him as the Stoic uh, philosopher emperor, but we don't really know much. Of, I didn't know much about his uh, campaigns. I now do, thanks to this. Fantastic. In the Ancients game uh, realm, I obviously got to give uh, honorable mention to Great Battles of History because I play it all the time and it's fantastic. And uh, the last game I played was uh, the Macedonian uh, Art of War. 
Had a fantastic time with that. I love that system to death. It's my go-to game. Uh, system for ancients and it's really the only game in town if you're uh, if you think about it that's still producing stuff now that my coffee is cold it's really quite chilly here today for Austin uh, bucketing down with the rain and gray outside uh, this is the next one uh, with it or on it is uh, uh, shields and swords ancients it's a modification of the medieval system from uh, Tom Russell and uh, Hollenspiel Games, and by the way, this was Hollenspiel as well. Uh, so I'm Hollenspiel fanboy this year. Really enjoyed the uh, the simplicity, yet the sort of onion-like uh, layers of decision making here in in this system. I'm not sure you're going to get like super accurate historical results, and most of them are blow out one way or the other anyway. So that's probably okay. Uh, but it did give you some rich decision making and I'm looking forward to A, playing some more of this and B, seeing uh, how he handles uh, the Roman era, uh, maybe the, the, the second, First and Second Punic War and uh, other battles besides these Macedonian and uh, Greek, Greek battles and the Thebians and whatnot. So really enjoyed that uh, for, from the, the, an ancient perspective. Uh, let's see. Let's deal. Let's deal with a, another solo game, like my second favorite solo game for the year, an oldie but a goodie. Uh, so let's call it this: the uh, best uh, classic solo game for the year, Carrier. Uh, <clears throat> I'm only seven, eight, nine turns into this, uh, and it's been sitting for weeks and weeks. I just have not had the time uh, because of uh, life stuff to get back into it. Fantastic! Cannot wait to see the re. Not the reprint, but the next version of this. I think it's Philippine Sea or something like that. And I think Compass is doing it. I forget, honestly. I kind of decided to do this off the cuff. So, um, sorry, if I'm not prepped. Fantastic game. Uh, absolutely needs an update uh, from uh, counter art and map and all the rest of it. Uh, in fact, Gary Crockover has redone the counters, redone the map, uh, with permission uh, from the designer. And it, uh, it's really good. His, his version of it is really good. I don't have it, but it's really good. I've seen it. It's really good. Uh, <clears throat> right, so that was Ancients and some Solitaire stuff. My next era that I really focused on this year or had some involvement in this year was uh, uh, Napoleonics. And hands down, best Napoleonic game I've played in, well, since Waterloo 200 from Vento Nuovo is this uh, the Waterloo 1815 campaign by Mark Herman, uh, C3I magazine game. Uh, a stunning, <laughs> literally sit down, start to play this opposed earlier in February this year, started playing and both of us just stopped and looked at each other and went, hang on a second, this is really interesting. And we were both trying to, you know, <clears throat> work it out as we played. We'd read the rules of, I think maybe I'd played one or two turns solo. <clears throat> and uh, the game has this continuous movement mechanic. And so it, there's this ebb and flow that goes on as you, you know, once you, you get into an enemy zone of control, that stops, that ends your movement for the turn. But there's this ebb and flow that you can keep moving units. And the game is not about combat, the game's about maneuver, which is so classically Napoleonic that it just, why hasn't someone done this before with this, at this scale? Um, leadership has done well. Cavalry is integrated into the game in a, in a smart way. And this is also at the core level. So it's highly abstract, but thematic as all get out and a really rich gameplay experience. Uh, you know, if I was going to play it on Vassal, you, you, you should just play live. Don't do it by email because it, you'll do 400 files backwards and forwards. But just absolutely a joy to play. Beautiful map. Uh, some of the hex, hex numbers are a little hard to read, but uh, the, the counter work, the counter art is, is functional and works well. Uh, I love the game. Easy to, easy to get into. Great intro game, right? If you want to get people a little brain burner thinking about things and get into wargaming, that's one for you. All right, let me see what else, what else we got here. Uh, that's right. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, talk, I guess, so I, now I kind of want to break things. 
The other classical game this year, actually, before I go on to that topic, that I enjoyed immensely was Sniper. I played Sniper, I uh, haven't played that in forever. I played that and did a, a live session online and got all the folks that turned up to grab a, grab a character, grab a guy and tell me where, where, where he's gonna move, right? So instead of plotting movement, they, they got to move the guys. And then I moved the pre-plotted uh, enemy units. I had a great time with that. That was really good fun. That's a great little game. It has its flaws, but uh, it, it's, it's a grateful system. So there was that, right? Uh, now let's look at some theaters and what was my, my most uh, enjoyable games out of the different theaters that, uh, that I got to explore this year. And I just realized I missed, I missed, a, uh, I missed a game that I was underwhelmed un un with this year, but I will deal with that in just a second. Because it's in it's in both categories, uh, as as fabulous and and horrible at the same time, but we'll get to that. All right. So my my favorite East Front game was actually there with me <clears throat> was Jaws of Victory. Uh, <clears throat> this game really. <sighs> I'm trying to think how I want to express the. Uh, so while it's a you know counter dense, it's a classic World War II East Front. Lots of counters on the map, lots of stuff to chew on, lots of nuance and detail, but at the at the level enough where you're you're not going to be grinding through rules trying to work it out. Most of it's shifts and DRMs and things of that nature. Uh, you know it's all built on the Victory in the West system and then expanded and deepened and changed in the way that uh, New England Simulations does its thing. It's jam-packed with content. There are really only three scenarios in it, but I think there's uh, there's an opportunity for multiple plays, particularly on the uh, right-hand side of the map, which which would be the eastern side of the map, I guess. Uh, I'm sure there's multiple plays there just for this the Russian opening and how the Germans will manage their defense. I haven't seen anyone say it's broken yet, which is kind of nice for an East Front game. So this got my vote for uh, East Front game of the year for me. Just fantastic. I uh, only played it once, waiting to play 2021. We'll, we'll, we'll do this opposed with my buddy. So there's that. And the next game that I want to touch on would be uh, uh, the African uh, Theater. And we've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, gameplay on DAC this year, uh, OCS. Just, I, I, if you're going to go out and buy an OCS game, and you're going to make an investment to get into the ho into the hobby of OCS, it's a hobby unto itself. This is probably the one you want to get. If you're only going to buy one OCS game. I would get this game if you have an interest in the African front. And I know people are going to say, well, it's too big and blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of one and two map scenarios on here that you can have a lot of fun with and get a lot of rich gameplay out of. Go buy the uh, the other version of it, just the first version, DAC. It's it's almost identical. Go download the, the adjusted rules and the, the, the errata and enjoy it. And for 135 bucks, which is I think is what it's going for now, maybe 150 well worth it uh really good stuff so that was the african front now the the west front uh time for trumpets was my favorite west front game uh also my least favorite uh west front game setup instructions all the rest of it uh, you go see the videos i posted on it i got very frustrated with it and if you're actually going to do it exactly right and get it all down nailed down it is a, a it's a truly going to be a laborious effort and, a, and has to be a labor of love. I was fortunate that I played it. It was already set up and we had the designer coaching us about who could move and who couldn't because he knew it all off the top of his head. Uh, and the gameplay is fantastic and I enjoyed it immensely and I can't wait to play it. I just did not have the the mental and emotional bandwidth to deal with uh, the the finessing that was going to be required 
to, to work out who goes where and when and when they can, can and can't move and which road they have to go down and if they bang into someone, something happens and if they don't bang into someone, something happens and if they think they might bang into someone, then something might happen or it might not roll a die. There's a lot of that and it just was way too much for me to uh, to come to grips with. So so that was um, that was disappoint uh, that was disappoint from a disappointment standpoint uh, there was that but on the on the positive side, uh, <clears throat> a, a fantastic gameplay experience once it's set up. All right, so DAC kind of covered off on Africa and uh, World War II uh, sort of operational scale stuff. Oh, I did want to mention BCS. So where is BCS? Here we go. BCS. This system here. Probably for me, I would say uh, either Waterloo or this game here would come in as the most innovative title I've played this year. Uh, I, I've had a couple of runs at this with folks uh, and I've had a, a run at it unopposed, you know, solo uh, with the last Blitzkrieg and was came away confused <clears throat> and disillusioned. And uh, I have since played opposed and uh, read the revised rules and now there's a version two of the rules, which I think is changing the game again. But I think the system has settled down and the gameplay that I had with this, I quite enjoyed. I didn't quite get it because I felt like there were several aspects of it that were, there were some things that were overpowered, but I think in the version two rules that that's being addressed. I think Brazen Chariots is probably your go-to guy if you want to get into the, uh, the BCS system or the Kasserine game, just because it's a smaller footprint, it's one map and there's not a lot of units on the board and you can kind of goof around with it. You may not get a rich opposed experience, but you'll get a great game experience to, to learn the system. So my number one or number two most innovative title for the year. All right, we're nearly done. <clears throat> Our favorite tactical system for the year, uh, the MBT system. Uh, uh, the expand. I guess this this stuff has uh, fallen out of the baggies. Uh, expansion had great fun with 4C MBG. Really enjoyed it. The Canadians, the Canuckians, getting after it with the Soviets. Love Leos. Love playing with uh, you know T80s and T64s and Leos and all the rest of it. Super fun game. Uh, I love the add the add the level of complexity you like sets set of rules for the overall system you want to use morale you want to use uh, advanced command you want to use advanced artillery you want to use air you can use it or not use it and and still have a great uh, gaming experience you want to use the super duper detailed uh, 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 fire rules combat rules knock yourself out you can do that or you just want to just want to roll three dice and go yeah did I hit or not boom you can do that too so Really, really cool system. My favorite tactical game for the year. Uh, probably not on everyone's list, but probably should be. I know there's a reprint coming. I think it's all out of, out of print, so <clears throat> who knew, right? Now, um, my last era that I wanted to cover off on was Modern, and the uh, there's two titles that really vied for supremacy here with me in terms of uh, number of game plays and... Uh, and just overall amazing quality. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so the first, uh, the first, let's do the runner up, right? Because I, it'll, I have quite a few words to talk about here with this. So, real quick, runner up, Deadly Northern Lights, a big, meaty, chewy, involved, not complex, but involved game. I like the artwork on the maps, I like the counters. I, I, I have questions about how the artwork works, but on the counters but that's how the dude wants to Fabrizio wants to do it that's all good by me my I was, I'll call this my second favorite title uh, uh, for modern uh, it, but really a thought provoking game highly evocative with theme I wrote a lot about it on my blog you can go read the narrative you can go read the gameplay stuff this this game is a war game a ground ground-based operational slash grand tactical, excuse me, uh, coffee is uh, messing with me, uh, system. And that's what it looks like, but it's actually an air war game, right? Uh, the air war is gonna drive 
your success. So if you don't have control of the skies, you dies. Uh, it's got that going for it. All right, so uh, number one game and my probably my favorite game of the year. It's and it's not you, Bob. I'm sorry. Uh, Storm in the Gap, right? This Kickstarter was delivered to my door. Uh, two, there's two of these boxes this size, right? 120 bucks. Amazing counter art. Amazing maps. Fantastic rule book. Great scenarios. Great charts. Beautiful full color rule book. And yeah, it's big and thick, but it's huge font for old eyes. Uh, and lots of descriptions and analysis and uh, explanations and examples and all the rest of it. So that makes it a bigger, thicker, heavier rule book. It just is what it is. Uh, you can just play off these two little doohickeys right here and be done. You need a terrain chart as well. And then Bob's your uncle. Uh, you've got, uh, actually, you know what? This box just has all the, um, I rearranged all this. This box just has the cards and, uh, and the maps in it. But uh, instead of using chits for... You know, uh, a chip pull, it's a card pull for formation activation. It's a formation activation, activation platoon scale game set in 1985, World War III. If you're into that sort of thing, this is your go-to guy. Cool uh, uh, geomorphic maps that are just awesome. I have, you know, I played the old system over a hundred times. I got nine plays of this in this year, including a play test of the next module, uh, one of the scenarios on the next module, which which was really tight. The scenario design is probably the key thing that makes this uh, so fabulous, is because nearly all the scenarios are super tight, uh, and you're going to be you're literally going to unless you are a rock star tactical tactical guy. You're going to be playing down to the last uh, the last game turn for every every scenario. I highly recommend Lock and Load's World of War '85. Fantastic uh, system, fantastic production values, great gameplay, great community as well. So fantastic community, very similar to the Lock and Load Tactical community, which is also amazing. And there's a lot of new stuff coming out for Lock and Load Tactical as well. So I'm super excited about uh, what they're doing and the way they're treating digital and, and uh, physical world games and, and meshing those two together and giving you the opportunity to play both or either uh, in, in a very cost-effective manner. So I, I think it's a really, really smart business model. They're the only people doing what they're doing right now. And I think they're, they're probably gonna change the gameplay, the game, war game marketplace significantly. Uh, with their efforts. It's fantastic stuff. So, Happy New Year. Let's bring 2021 on. I am ready to go with 2021. I won't be getting to play as many games this year, unfortunately. I won't be uh, posting as much, which for some of you, you'll be thrilled to hear, and for others, you'll be like, oh, boo -hoo. But I am going to try and do more live gameplay uh, which means that I'll have to know the game better so they don't screw it up live all the time. But uh, I'm also going to try, uh, when I do post, it will hopefully be uh, a little richer, a little deeper writing instead of my sort of cursory style that I have, which is fairly matter of fact. Uh, more interested, <clears throat> I, I seem to be developing a, an interest in doing more narrative oriented stuff. Uh, you know, you don't need me to tell you how to play the game. There's lots of guys that do that. There's lots of tutorial stuff out there for all the for all these different systems. You just got to go find them, right? There's lots and lots of new bloggers out there as well, and lots and lots of new YouTube channels, which is fantastic. Anytime I find out <clears throat> about a new uh, a new a new uh, YouTuber, I, I love to give them props and and make people aware of them which is what we should be doing, right? To encourage the community to have richer content and more content and more viewpoints and more voices as well. Uh, helps make it a more inclusive society. So uh, all of that said, I'm gonna try and finish and shut the hell up and say Happy New Year to you and yours. And I hope that you have a great year next year and roll dice.